Okay, so after uh, a few days of looking around the internet, um, I was coming up to all kinds of roadblocks on trying to figure out how to change and customize a cold boot logo running custom firmware EvilNet on 4.9. I saw some tutorials as far as using a Rebug custom firmware, but Rebug is kind of a, a different beast. It, it seems like it offers some developer tools, which EvilNet doesn't have right off the bat unlocked. I figured I'd make this quick tutorial on how to create, install, and set up a custom cold boot. So uh, first of all, you need some prerequisites. Uh, you most notably need a PlayStation 3 that's running custom firmware. And for the sake of this video, I'm running EvilNet 4.9. Also need Multiman, which is a package app that you run on the PlayStation 3. And you need Easy Static Raft Converter. And uh, I have links for those in the description. But um, yeah, you just come over here to Brewology as far as Multiman goes. Come down here to uh, Multiman Base. Click Download. And it downloads Multiman Base. And then as far as uh, Custom Cold Boot Creator, um, have this thread. Just go to this Mediafire link. It opens up a uh, Mediafire download and uh, just downloads it directly to your computer as well. So once you got those two programs, um, next thing you need is some artwork. As far as me, I just downloaded this Demon Hunter logo um, off of uh, their Facebook page. And so there's the logo that I'm going to be working with. There's a couple of methods you can do this. If you have any creativity or Photoshop skills, then you can just create one of your own choosing. If you don't, then the best option is to go to Google Image, Bing Image, Yahoo Image, wh wh however you search for images, and look for a, a PNG file with a transparent background. But uh, if you know how to make those, um, you can just download images and make them yourself. So we had this in Photoshop, so I'll go ahead and double click on this to remove the lock privileges. So at uh, this point, um, I'll just go ahead and use Magic Wand to uh, select all the black. And uh, at that point, we can delete that. And then uh, hold control, select the uh, thing again. And uh, now I'll change this to a custom color. Uh, we'll just do red. There we go. So now we have our uh, logo set. So I'll go ahead and save a copy in the same directory. Um, we'll choose a PNG file and save yes okay whatever so there we go so now it's safe so now we have our uh, uh png so you know if we move this around we can see there's a transparency there and uh we can open up and, and there it is so now we have our uh png file um now we just uh use uh easy static graph converter now the best option i found is to move the program into the folder that you're working in so that way everything is in a nice, you know, convenient location. So at this point, you just uh, open up uh, Easy Static Graph Converter. And it says it wants you to, to choose the image. So uh, we select the image. And we can do Show Preview. And it shows us in real time what uh, our image looks like. So I'm going to go with uh, Custom. I'm going to change the dimensions to what, 680, I guess. By 680. Do uh, center right, so it's just like the original boot logo. And so now that um, we have everything set, I mean, you, you can change all these parameters. You can do zoom, you can do stretch, you can do fill, um, you can do whatever. But um, I like that. So we'll go ahead and choose convert. And now it actually makes a cold boot file out of this in that same folder. So if we uh, double click on this, we have our uh, preview, which is just a static image showing this is what it's kind of going to kind of look like. And now we ha have our uh, cold boot ref. So on the PlayStation 3, um, if you're running uh, EvilNet, you have uh, two options under basic tools. You can have the cold boot logo set as original. And if that is set, um, I'll go ahead and restart this, do a, a soft reset. You get the uh, standard PlayStation 3 logo upon boot. And the other option that we have is um, if you go to here, you can toggle it to a custom cold boot. And we'll go ahead and reset it again so you can see what that is. And with that, that is the EvilNat logo. 
So with that in mind, um, what we're doing is we're going to be uh, changing the um, standard Colboot logo because the standard is uh, in the PlayStation 3 directory and the evil Nat is in uh, the evil Nat area. So I'm just going to come back over here and go to basic tools and change this back to original cold boot. So now we have the original PlayStation 3 logo cold boot. Okay, so with that being said, the next thing we want to look at is we want to look at um, Multiman. And so I'm going to come down to uh, Multiman. We're going to go ahead and open that up. And uh, your multi-man may look different from mine whenever you first boot up. Uh, if you uh, use um, L1 and R2, you can cycle through the, um, the different uh, skins. And so I'm going to get to this skin. So once it's in um, this screen, you can cycle over to uh, settings. You can scroll down to the very last option, which is right access to dev flash. Um, you want to set that up as enable. And uh, at that point, um, you can go ahead and close the program. Next, we're going to uh, FTP into our PlayStation. So for that, uh, we'll be using FileZilla. Um, you can use whatever FTP client you're most comfortable with. Uh, I prefer FileZilla, so that's what I'll be using. So if we come to our PlayStation, we go down to uh, Network Settings. Make sure uh, Internet Connection is enabled. And this works wireless or Wi-Fi, whichever. Um, and then you go to uh, settings and connection status. And then you want to look at uh, your IP address. And that is the local unique address for your PlayStation 3. So uh, with that, you just come over to FileZilla, click on Site Manager, and um, set up a new site. And what we want to do is we want to put in that IP address 192.168.1.21 and only use plain FTP because it's insecure. The port you can leave blank. As far as protocol, file transfer protocol, login type anonymous. Um, and was there any other settings? I think everything else is fine. So uh, click OK to set up your thing. And then once that's done, uh, click on PS3. Okay, so uh, once you log in, um, you would go to folder dev blind. And then you go to uh, VSH. You go to resources, and then you're looking for uh, cold boot raf. So with this, um, I'm going to rename this dot old because this is the PS3 boot logo. And then after that, then we'll just find that uh, folder of the cold boot that we created. We'll just drag and drop that into that folder. And now it's in. So uh, once that's done, that's all done. So we'll go back to our PlayStation 3. And so now all we have to do is just do a simple reboot. Um, so go here, power options. And there is the new cold boot logo that we created. And now I like this tutorial much better than the old way because there were some other tutorials I was reading that were having you muck around with hex editing and making multiple images and the images had to be in black and white and all this other nonsense. And with this, I mean, you can just grab any image you want and you can drop it in. And like uh, I got this uh, image of Luxa Bliss. I can go um, save a copy and then... Um, Save a copy here, save, okay, yes, whatever. And then at that point, um, we can open this up. We can go to Easier Creator, open that image, um, get out of here. Show preview. Um, there we go. And then convert, done. And I will, this one, I'll just go ahead and delete the one that I imported. And I'll just drag and drop this one in here. And then come back to the PlayStation 3. And there you go. Alexa Bliss. As the boot logo on the PlayStation 3. So, as you can see, it doesn't even have to be monochrome, doesn't even have to be black and white, doesn't have to be anything. As long as it's a PNG image of some sort, and it looks best if there's a transparency. And I guess technically it doesn't even have to be a transparency, you can just put some random JPEG of your cat there, and whatever, it just kind of looked kind of goofy. But uh, if you have a PNG with transparent background, it, it looks much cleaner because it pops out from the ribbon background. 
But uh, I hope this helped because as I said, I was digging all over the place. I had to go through some message boards, ask some people, can I get a step-by-step -step guide on how to do this? I was able to finally have some guy who was kind enough to uh, point out all the, the minute steps in that. So I um, hope this helped you and thanks for watching and peace out.